donkey, we can learn too. Maybe not, and that donkey that, that uh, Jesus rode in was not a talking donkey, but nonetheless, we can learn a lot of things from him. Why did he get the young donkey? Why was it a colt? For one thing, it was an animal of purity. It was an animal of purity. It was a young colt. Not only that, but no one had ever ridden on this donkey. No one. It was only going to be Jesus. And the importance of a donkey is, why didn't he get some kind of a big steed to ride in on a white horse? Because that was not the custom in that day. The mightier the king, the more humble the animal. And so, they chose the humble donkey. All kings, in fact, when David was going to pronounce, Solomon is going to be the next king, he put him on a donkey and paraded him through town because royalty rode on donkeys. Only royalty rode on the donkey. And that's why Jesus rode in on the donkey that day because he was royal. 1 Kings 1, 33. 1 Kings 1, 33 is where you'll find where Solomon was paraded around on a donkey. Zechariah prophesied in, in uh, Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king. He comes righteous and victorious riding on a donkey. Prophesied. Prophesied was filled. Uh, prophecy was filled. And donkeys. Well, yeah, they're stubborn animals. But you know something? When the Lord asked about this donkey, this donkey wasn't stubborn. How stubborn are we sometimes? We are stubborn and set in our ways and not being as uh, useful for the Lord as we ought to be. In Matthew 21, Jesus prepared then to enter in Jerusalem. The starting of the Passover, we are the uh, Passion Week, leading up to his crucifixion. The Bible says that Jesus selected two men to go and get this donkey. Told him where it was. Did bring him, and he rode upon that. Now the donkey, what can we learn about this donkey? Three things. Every one of them start with A. Three things you can learn about this donkey. One, this donkey was accessible. The donkey was accessible. Accessible means in a place where one can be reached, approached. Jesus knew where this donkey was, the availability of this donkey, and the accessibility of him, and he went and got him. Accessibility. Are we accessible to the Lord? The donkey was where it needed to be. He was right where Zechariah prophesied he would be. He was tied up, and they loosed him so that he could be used. And he was used because he was accessible. Are we accessible for the Lord? So many of us are bound up with so many things that, well, we feel like we're just not qualified. You know, I, 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 Lord, I, I wish I could be accessible to you. I wish you could count on me, but I just don't feel worthy. I, I, I'm, it's like the, the message a couple of weeks ago, the little foxes. There's so many little foxes that are messing me up, making me feel so unworthy that I can't be used of the Lord. I feel inadequate. You know, I've felt that way many times. Uh, I, may, I may be off and, and, and working with something and it's not working the way I want it to, and the more I work with it, the, the, the more upset I get with it, and the more I feel like I want to just throw this thing against the tree and, and get away from it and come into the house and sit down huffing and puffing and get a telephone call and say, Brother Tim, I'd like for you to help me pray about something. <laughs> I'd say, I bet you want me to pray about your temper, don't you? <laughs> feel inadequate. Sometimes I say, look, I need your prayers more than you need mine. We're just tied up with all kinds of things and we just need to be loosed. Become accessible to the Lord. Some of you are tied up with sin. Tied up with something that kind of messes you up and you're thinking, feeling like, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saved, but, but I don't feel like I'm, I don't think I'm ready for God to do anything with me. So we're not in a place where God can use us. We're tied up with self, get so busy with things, tied up with our own desires, our workload, our business, tired up, tied up with what others might think about us. 
if we was to do anything. I mean, who do they think they are? I know them better than other people, and they're just not worthy to be out there doing anything like that for God. Having a lack of confidence and even a lack of faith. Well, to be used of God, whatever we're tied up, let God loose you today. Become accessible. Be in a place, be in a place where God can use you. Set me free, Lord, so that this day I can be used of you. The donkey also teaches us availability. Now, accessible and availability, those two things seem to be similar. But now, accessibility is being in the right place at the right time, and availability is being willing to be used at that time. You see the difference? You ever hear somebody say, if you need me, give me a call. Accessibility. All right, I need you today. Oh, I'll, uh, you just happened to pick the wrong day. I, I can't come today. I can't do it today. Availability. I'm accessible. You can call me, but I'm not available to do anything for you. How many times are we saying here in the church, I'm accessible to you, Lord, and then God on Monday and Tuesday calls you to do something, and you say, well, it's not available today, Lord. Not today. Not today. The donkey was willing to be used by the Lord. The donkey could have resisted, but he wasn't. Exist he wasn't resisting. He wasn't stubborn. He was willing to be used of the Lord. And we need to be available to be used of the Lord too. We're in different places at different times. And I think of some of your testimonies that you, you call and tell me about a great victory. And I'm thinking, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm available, I'm available, but I can't be where all y'all are. And that's why we are a body of believers, because God wants to use us wherever we might be. And none of us are at the same place at the same time all the time. So if we're scattered, look at the voice, look at the people that God can use to touch so many others. And I love your testimonies when you tell me about how God used you to be available for somebody. Availability, to be used of God. Some of us resist the Lord because we don't want to be used. We don't want to be in a position of possibly being embarrassed or saying and, or doing the wrong thing. You know, if you're doing something for God, the Holy Spirit knows how to, to cover things up. I have been talking to some people sometimes and, and uh, uh, not know what to say. I just, I just put the mouth in gear and start rattling off and thinking, where are you going with that? I mean, that doesn't even make sense to me, and it's coming out of me. Uh, it's just a mess, uh, just a real mess. And when I'm done, the folks said, that made more sense to me than anything I have heard. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how? But the Holy Spirit can change what another person hears. might come out of your mouth a certain way, but the Holy Spirit changes it when it goes into the ear. And it's just what they need. But had I not been willing to rattle on, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have had anything to use. So he uses us in ways that we sometimes don't even realize how well we can be used. I think about what Isaiah said, Here I am, Lord, send me. He was accessible and he was available. I've had scheduled days where everything was running right in order, and uh, uh, I've, I've got this place to go and that place to go, and, and, and I'm riding down the way, and I'll pass, believe me, I'll pass a house, and the Lord say, stop, because I've got somebody in there that you need to talk to. And I'll argue. I say, God, I'm on my way home. I've got to get home. My wife's going to have dinner on the table. I've got to go. And I know <clears throat> that is, that's fruitless. I know that I'm, I'm going to feel guilty if I don't do what God says. 
So I'll make a U-turn, and sometimes I have to go back two miles because I've argued with the Lord two miles down the way. Come back and go to the door, and I'll, I'll talk. And the Holy Spirit will have prepared that person to hear the word, what's your relationship with Jesus? I don't have one. Would you like to have one? I am desperate, they would say, and they'd give their heart to the Lord. It, it's, un, it's just uncanny how God can use you if you just make yourself accessible and available to him to be used. Amazing things can happen. So the donkey teaches us to be accessible. He teaches us that we should be available, and he teaches us to be accommodating. Hmm, accommodating, which means fitting in with his wishes. Accommodating, fitting in with the way he wants it done, what he wants done, do it his way. Being available and uh, accommodating to the Lord. Um, accessibility is being in the right place. Availability is, uh, is being used, but accommodating is being used the way they want to use you. I was in Florida. My wife and I was uh, at um, a major convention down in Florida, and um, uh, in the midst of a lot of talented people, Jack Hayford was was about to speak, so he was on the platform, and and uh, um, Brother Burst was a supervisor, and so I don't know what happened. I don't even know why, but. Out of the blue, Brother Burr said, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Tim Newton to come up here and, and sing a song. And I thought, I said to my wife, I said, name a song, name a song, just give me a song quick. <laughs> and she said, I don't know any, and I don't know. I said, okay. <laughs> so I'm walking up there saying, God, please, I don't know what to sing. I, I don't know. And I, I get up to the piano. Uh, it's a nice grand piano, and you can see underneath. And so everybody out there in the, in the uh, congregation, uh, uh, I mean, aud auditorium is what it was, they could see my foot. I am so nervous that my foot was actually doing like this, <laughs> and I couldn't stop it, and it, I wasn't keeping time either because I was singing, Because He Lives, <laughs> and I couldn't stop my foot. I thought, God, I can't, I can't stop it. I can't relax. But I'm singing like, like okay. And I, and I sat down. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, God, why did you do that? Why, I mean, out of all these other people that could have sung, why, why did all of a sudden he just, out of the blue, unplanned, come up here and sing a song? And it was like God demonstrated, I wanted to see if you would accommodate me. <laughs> I know you're accessible. I know you're available. Because that's right, I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything else. He said, but will you accommodate me? And that's a big difference. Will you accommodate? Will you do what I tell you to do? When I tell you to do it? Oh, to be accommodating to the Lord. So the donkey was accommodating. Because when he got to where Jesus was, or she got to where Jesus was, and Jesus got on, accommodating. He wasn't bucked off. He wasn't resisted in the sense, I'm not moving. But the old donkey, accessible, available, and accommodating, was used in a glorious way. Oh, God wants to use a lot of us. And, and we want to use, and we, want, we want to be God. And then we think sometimes God's ways are always going to be the majestic way, the miraculous way, the healing way. And God wants us to just be available for even little trivial things. Even little trivial things. There was a, a lady that I heard about. Uh, I didn't know her, but I knew about her faith and how that God would use her. And she'd been praying, God, use me mightily. Use these hands, Lord. And Lord, these hands are yours. I could say they're accessible, they're available, and they're accommodating 
Use me, Lord. And we always, when we say that, think, okay, somebody's going to get their soul saved. Or somebody's going to get their healing. And this lady began to pray. And she said, Lord, I am your servant. And my friend I heard today has got cancer. Lord, what would you have me do for my friend today? And my thoughts were on the next statement, go over and lay hands upon her, heal her in my name. That would be my thought. That would be what we think God is going to say. But God said, go over there and take her a meal. Well, this was not miraculous. This was not God. I mean, God, you can, you're, you're bigger and better than that. Uh, give me something really to do. But that didn't leave. So she went and bought a meal and took it over to her friend's house. And her friend thanked her so much. Say, thank you. Thank you so much for this. You just, you just don't know what this means to me because I just didn't feel good today. And I didn't even prepare anything for my family, but you sure have blessed me. Thank you. Well, a few days went by, and she was praying again. And she said, Lord, here I am. Use me. My friend's got cancer. What would you have me do for her today? Thinking of majestic thoughts, the Lord spoke to her and said, I want you to go over now and buy them some groceries. Just go to the store, buy some groceries. Nothing else. So she went to the store and she bought all these groceries and she took them over and the, the, the friend received them with, with tearful eyes. Say, thank you so much. How did, how did you know that we didn't have the wherewithal to really get any groceries? And, and here you do, you bring the groceries that's good enough for a whole week. Thank you so much. Well, now this made her feel good. And she was praying a few days later, Lord, here I am. I'm available. Use me. My friend has still got cancer. What would you have me do for her today? He said, go over there and clean up her house. No questions asked. By now she knows. Okay, go do it. And she went over there and she cleaned the lady's house. Dusted here and there, washed all the unwashed dishes and put everything where it needed to be. Washed some clothes that she didn't feel like washing anymore. Got all that taken care of. It took some time. You see, when you ask God to use you, it's not going to be a wham and done. Sometimes it's a whole day's work. Whole day. It's like the 16 hours work back here. And, the, and something that you think, this is ministry? Digging up a sewer? That is ministry? Come on, God. But there it was, being accessible, available, and accommodating. Lord, here I am, my friend. She's still got cancer. What would you have me do for her today? Now, she had prayed this for several days. And every day or every time she prayed it, God gave her something to do, something to do, something to do, something manual, something physical to do. And uh, and so she was ready. She said, God, what would you have me do today? Because she cleared her calendar. She said, I know now when I pray this kind of prayer, God's going to clear my calendar so I can do it. What would you have me do today, Lord? And after about three weeks of doing this, she said, Lord, here I am. These are your hands. What would you have me do for my friend who's still got cancer? He said, now, go over to her house and lay your hand upon her. For this day, I will heal her of all cancer. And she went, did, and she was healed of cancer. God could have done it three weeks earlier. But somehow or another, he wanted to use this lady, teach this lady, just like he wants to use us and teach us that ministry is not always about the anointing of the flow of tremendous power. Sometimes it's to be used of God, to speak, to sing, to pray, just doing things. That's ministry. 
That's help. And that is what God wants to use every one of us to do. When you read the book of Acts, and they had all things in common, the Bible says. That means if somebody had a, a problem with their, their uh, area of, of fire in, in, their, in their homes, well, people that knew what they were doing would come and accommodate. If somebody had a, another problem with one of their roofs and they couldn't do anything, one of the roofers would come over and say, I will accommodate. I will take care of it. They had all things in common. They were a family. They were a body. And that's what God wants to use us for. What can we learn from that donkey? We can learn a lot, but especially three things. The donkey was accessible. He was in the right place at the right time. He was available. Wasn't doing anything else. He was tied up otherwise. This way he could be loose and be used. And he was accommodating. How about us? I mean, you're better than a donkey. God can use you to do more than a donkey. And if he can do that with him or her, what do you think he can do with us? Oh, that song, to be used of God, to speak, to, to, uh, speak, to sing, to pray, to be used of God in some of one of his ways. I long so much to feel the touch of his anointing power to be used of God. Lord, use me this very hour. I made up some other words, but nonetheless, that's the way I feel. God wants to use you in a glorious and wonderful way. But are you tied up? What's, 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 what are you tied up to? The donkey was tied up, couldn't unloose himself. Jesus had to cause the disciples to loose him. And aren't you glad that Jesus didn't loose him, but the disciples did? You know there's a lot of people that are tied up with all kinds of stuff. They're messed up with all kinds of of, of different sins and thoughts and schedules and they just don't have time for God. And realizing that we're living in the last days, we need to be about the business of the Lord, loosing people, setting them free. You got the power to do that. And how he uses it to set people free, it might take some time. It might take those three weeks. But God's got a reason for using you the way he uses you. Don't doubt it to say I'm going to do this and I'm doing it as unto the Lord and do it to the best of your ability Colossians says that everything you do do it as unto the Lord so you're not doing it for money you're not doing it for recognition some of the things some of the greatest things that's ever take place some of the greatest things that's ever taken place is by people who are not recognized some of the greatest poems that you'll ever read author unknown or songs that you would sing the same way Boy, forget about that copyright stuff and forget about making a name for myself. No, it is, this is what God gave me. I freely give it. To be used of God. Father, I know that there are people that, especially in this, in the next week, especially with Easter, <coughs> people are thinking of Easter as, as a time of, of dressing up and, and having something special, uh, a day of of, of of being off for sure from work, possibly being uh, in church someplace where maybe you've not been in 52 weeks, but you're, you're, you're here today. And Lord, there's a lot of people that are tied up with so many other things, but we can see the post that they're tied to this week. We can see the post that they're tied to, and Lord, we can talk about you. Easter is not the eggs. Easter is not the money rabbit. Easter is about you and the resurrecting power. Lord, even while we're standing in line at some store, I thank you, Father, that we can talk about the goodness of you, thanking God for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I just pray that you will use us as we make ourselves accessible to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord,